Recently, I applied for a futuristic point-to-point -point transport, and all I got was this lousy beam. But, like the old saying goes, if life gives you beams, make beam lanterns. First, cut up your beam into lantern-sized segments. My beam was slightly larger than what my miter saw could do in one go, so I turned it, aligned the cut with a blade, and cut another section. This is bound to cause slight ridges, but if you take your time and aim carefully to minimize them, they should not interfere with the design, and or be easily removed. Also keep in mind that any candle, even a small tea light, needs room to breathe, and to be safe. You can always cut away more if your lantern turns out too long. The next step is to cut the pyramid roof of the lantern. You can choose any angle you want as long as your table saw blade extends far enough vertically for two cuts from opposite sides to intersect. You need four of these cuts, one on each side, for the pyramid to emerge. And you need to make sure that they are all on the same height. I use my fence for this, but you could also use a mitre gauge or, if yours is large enough to make these cuts, a mitre saw. Next, you need to cut away the corners, which will later serve as supports or columns for the roof. The easy part is to set the fence to the desired width of the supports. Feel free to experiment with different sizes. The harder part is to set the blade to the right height, which is a little higher than the width to make for a crisp corner. The best way to do that is to work your way up to it. Set the blade to less than the distance of the fence and make a cut in one corner. Then turn the piece so that you are going to cut the other face of that corner. If the roof went in first on the first cut, the bottom needs to hit the saw first on the second. Now you can easily see whether the blade needs to be raised. You can use the cut for reference, but do not go too high. Repeat the test cut on the same corner to see how well it fits. If the cuts intersect and the piece comes out, you are not quite done yet, because you also need the inside corner to be crisp. You can remove the little ridge, the outside edge within the inside edge, with a knife or a chisel, but at least for me the knife was quicker. But it will be easier to raise the blade just a little further to eliminate that ridge. Now repeat these cuts on all four corners and set the four pieces aside. If you make multiple lanterns with different width for the columns, make sure to keep the matching pieces together. Now we have to make room for the tea light. This is done by cutting away everything that should not be there. In other words, cut off the roof and the base and discard the middle. On my table saw that takes two cuts and I use my fence to make them. But a miter saw would work well too. The bottom needs a tea light sized hole, best made with a sharp forstner bit or a spade bit of the appropriate size. I do not have a spade bit large enough and my forstner bit does not appear to be sharp either. So I labored my way to the hole using a small spade bit and a small braid point bit to remove material after marking the hole with a less than sharp forstner. Yes, I know how to sharpen them, but I think I overheated mine or something. It worked, did it not? The four supports are now glued to the base, which is why the corners need to be cleaned. So as you can probably guess, there are many ways you can make these and here I varied the, the size of the, the piece that I cut out. Here for example is one with thinner beams and this one. Well, some might call it an imperfection, but there's a, a knot here and this piece just came off. But well, it looks kind of neat that way, kind of floating. And there's all this dried up resin here. Speaking of resin, there is, well, it's probably the beam that I used, but there was still resin in there in pockets. There's some coming out, you can probably see it bulge. And what I find pretty nice is this one, and you can see it ran down and made a little pool. So, well, you can scratch it away, you can seal it up with sawdust and wood glue, but I don't really much, I, I don't really see a problem with that. But something else that I need to point out for this one and I think this one I didn't clue in the top. Why? Well, for starters, you can see the difference in height that I used to get 
different effects, also different angles. But with this one, for example, I can now just go and push this down. It's a really tight fit, so there's not actually need for glue, and I got these little corners here. Or I can carefully, of course, push it up, get a whole different effect. But like I said, it's not necessary to glue those in most of the time, unless you have these for some reason splaying outwards and this will just fall down, then you should probably go with a drop of glue. Well, and of course, you know, there's something that's mandatory when I do a tea light project. Kinda like how this one works. Of course, it's by no means wind safe, so to use it outside, you might have to work out li a little something for that. Maybe I'll do too. So, I hope you enjoyed this. I have more tea light projects, and you can check out the playlist for them. Thanks for watching, and remember to be enlightened. Uh, I mean, inspired.